just yesterday there was a big study looking at colchicine, which is a, an anti-inflammatory therapy and its effects on cardiovascular events. And in fact, there was a reduction in cardiovascular events from a medicine that actually, uh, up until now, we knew only targeted inflammation. And just even, I think, uh, two years ago, there was a therapy that looked at um, um, canakinumab, which is uh, a monoclonal antibody and it is an anti-inflammatory therapy. And what we found, or what the, the investigators found, was that the um, rates of cardiovascular disease were decreased. But then surprisingly, they also saw that the rates of lung cancer were also decreased. Um, so I think that there is, there's a lot of interest in better understanding um, how inflammation uh, is related in heart disease, how inflammation is related in cancer, and is this a potential mechanism that links the two disease entities. I think that we still don't know enough about this link between if somebody has developed heart disease um, and their future cancer risk to be able to necessarily change practice patterns quite yet, but I definitely think that the field is moving in that direction. You know, our study says that, you know, if your 10-year ASCBD risk is high, you should potentially not only be having a discussion with your primary care physician, your cardiologist, your oncologist about your future can uh, your future cardiovascular risk, but is but do we need to be thinking about additional screening for cancer? Do we need to be more mindful about that? Um, that I think will remains to be seen as we as we start to better understand the mechanisms and the connections between these two disease processes. Um, but I, I certainly think that that's exactly where the field is moving. So for our study specifically, we are, you know, we studied this in a very large group of patients from the Framingham Heart Study, but it is one group, it's part of a community in Framingham, Massachusetts, and so we're hoping to validate these data in another group um, in the Netherlands, uh, a group that we collaborate very closely with. Um, and so I think that will be very helpful to better understand if there's heterogeneity across different populations, is this something that we're actually seeing across the globe? And then there's actually been a number of uh, studies looking mechanistically, so even animal studies is trying to better understand, just as you say, the chicken or the egg. Is it that if you develop heart failure that there's something that may increase your risk for developing cancer, whether it's inflammation, whether it's secreted factors, what, what is the cause? Is, is there truly cause and effect? We don't know that yet. This is, our work is observational and so it really is, um, it, it shows us association. Um, but I think the real interesting question will be, is there truly, does heart disease truly cause cancer? cancer and or at least increase the risk of cancer and is the arrow point in that direction.